guys, welcome back to Strong Successful Male. So for today, I'm going to go over an article titled, 10 Reasons I Will Never Get Married Again, No Matter How Much I Love a Guy. And guys, this article is written by a woman, and she goes into all these different very good, solid reasons why she'll never marry again, or honestly, if she obviously knew better, she never would have gotten married in the first place. And the reason I chose this article for today is... For a while now, guys, I've done a lot of articles and I've talked myself about the subject of marriage and how just simply you shouldn't do it and marriage is dead, especially here in the West and so forth. But this one I'm doing because it comes from a woman's perspective. And what's really interesting is that she says a lot of things that I definitely wholeheartedly agree with about why it simply just doesn't work in this day and age. It's not worth it. Now, she obviously doesn't cover the things that how women are going to, well, the card is, well, things are in the women's favor in terms of the laws and family courts and all that. She doesn't talk about that because obviously, as we all know, you know, the deck is stacked against us guys. Woman could file for divorce for no reason because of no fault divorce. And even if the guy did everything right for years, still he could, she could get the house, the kids, you know, the cars, uh, the dog and the cat, everything. And a big chunk of the money, alimony check, part of his pension. I mean, all these things, even if they got everything right, and it's just wrong. And we, we all know this. We've, we've talked about this plenty of times. But what I really never got into too much are all the other things in with regards to a marriage and how it's just simply just not worth it. And she really focuses on these. And it's good to hear this from a woman because my prediction, guys, as time goes on, right now, you guys, have through, through videos I've done, you've seen a lot of articles of women complaining that they're now in their 30s or 40s and they claim there's no good guys out there or, or guys don't want to get married, guys don't want to settle down and they're pissing and moan about that and I predicted you're going to get more of that and probably women starting YouTube channels telling guys to man up and get married and all that bullshit and I predict that will continue and more and more of it as time goes on but also you're going to start getting a camp of women saying that have been through this and said you know what it's not worth it you know and, and they, they'll list reasons like this woman's going to do here and reasons that I wholeheartedly agree with. And they're going to pretty much say, Hey, you know, if you want to be together for you guys that want to do relationships, okay, do relationships, but you don't get married because it just kills it. It kills whatever good thing you may have had. And of course I tell you, don't move in with your girlfriend because that'll kill it just as well. Because pretty much you move in with your girlfriend. It's a pretty much almost like a marriage right then and there. And for you guys that have lived with a girlfriend in your life, and I've done it plenty of times, you know what I'm talking about. So I'm going to go through her article here. It's definitely good to hear. So it starts off saying, been there, done that, won't do it again. I've been married, I've been married once, and I don't plan to ever walk down the aisle a second time. There are so many people on their third or fourth marriage, and I have to question their sanity. Why would anyone put themselves through that more than once? Guys, everybody can screw up once in something, okay? Like a lot of guys get married in their 20s and they don't know any better because, let's be honest, we are conditioned by society and religion. That's just what you do. It's the progression in life, you know? And you could do it once and then see how it's a mistake. I just don't get it how people will do it sometimes two, three, four times. It's crazy. I mean, unless they're doing it because they're benefiting from it financially, like you get a lot of celebrities that do it to help, you know, help their status and get attention from the, you know, who their husband or wife is, you know, or maybe benefit from some money, but generally there's no benefit to it. So I don't get when people do it multiple times. It's crazy. Uh, So her first reason, nothing changes with a slip of a paper. In a relationship, nothing really changes when you get married. Yes, names change, finances change, but the relationship itself doesn't really change. There is no need to get married to continue a relationship. I don't need that piece of paper to have commitment if I want it. I can be in a serious relationship forever if I choose to do so without walking down the aisle. Well, I agree with all that, but what happens is, and she's not mentioning is, people tend to get married, and what happens whether, and this goes both ways, men and women, I'm not going to let guys off the hook here with this, is that they get married, and for guys, they might think, well, I got the ring on her finger, I don't got to take her out anymore, so over the weekend, it's just Netflix and chilling with takeout, okay? And the woman doesn't feel appreciated or loved because he doesn't court her anymore, and so she then figures, why should I 
keep taking care of myself? Why should I keep looking good and going to the gym and exercising and dressing sexy? Because he obviously doesn't care to take me out. So then she stops doing that. And then she stops taking care of herself and obviously maybe sleeping with the guy. And the guy thinks, why should I try to do anything? Because she doesn't take care of herself and doesn't want to sleep with me as much or anymore and all these things. And it's this vicious cycle because they both get comfortable knowing that, hey, in a manner of speaking, they're, I got them. You know, or the woman, whether she realizes or not, knows whether she's either subconsciously or just realizes it the second she says, I do, I got this guy. And anytime I can leave and I can get half his shit. So things do change even if they do, when they do say, I do, and they get that piece of paper. But in terms of just individually, rarely no. So uh, number two, weddings are overrated. I hate weddings. I've said that before. I hate going to weddings. You can have fun at the reception, but just sitting there in that pew or whatever it is, the church or temple or wherever somebody's getting married and watching the whole thing nowadays, because I got friends that are, you know, get married and all that. I just sit there the whole time thinking, yep, the odds are they're going to get divorced and all that. And I just think of all the shit that can go wrong. And I just feel bad for them. I just, I don't like doing it, to be honest with you anymore. She says, weddings are expensive, stressful, and, and they only last one day. A lot of work and planning goes into a wedding for one day of fun. It's supposed to be the best day of your life, but, but often things go wrong and you end up worrying about the guests and their experiences. Instead of having a wedding, why not simply throw a party? You'll be less stressed and there won't be the pressure of being the best day ever. That's what I plan to do. Well, she's saying this on the basis that she did this already, okay? Pretty much all women want to be the bride and be the center of attention and get to walk down the aisle and have their big party. But I haven't known many brides that actually had fun in their wedding because they're stressed out about everything going right, okay? And the guy that she's with, he pretty much goes with what she wants just to make her happy. And he's not having any fun because she's being a bridezilla. Now, does that mean that happens all the time? Absolutely not. But still, you know, women, they do get stressed out and... Usually they don't eat that day because they want to they fit in their dress the way they want and all that. So they're, you know, definitely anxious and all that. And it's a big waste of money. Take that money and get a down payment on a house if, you got, if you're going to use that money for something. Seriously. Uh, next one. You can leave when you want. Yes, te- technically you can walk out the door on a marriage. But it's a little harder. Legally, you're still married and connected to that person. If you're just simply dating and you find you're not, it's not working, you can leave with no legal consequences. Live together, get a cat, but don't get married and don't get credit cards or loans together and you'll be fine. That's my approach anyway. Well, yeah, that's the thing, guys. So if you are dating someone, let's just say you're doing an exclusive relationship. Okay, you can end it whenever you want, just like that. If that person is not living up to what they should be, okay? If they're not, you know, treating you in a way that you feel you should be treated, end it like that. But if you're married, it's a whole mess. If you got a house together, God forbid you have kids together, going through the whole divorce and that ugliness. But here's another thing, guys. She mentioned, okay, you can live together and get a cat. Well, if you live together, that's still a hassle because then someone's got to move out and find a new place. And let's just say the one moves out, and she leaves you on the hook for the rent that you counted on her to split. So this is why I say don't move in together. Just, you know, you can date and be exclusive if that's what you want to do. But you don't move in together. And this way then, she's always on uh, her best behavior because she knows just like that, through a text, it could be ended if she's not treating the guy right or if the guy isn't treating her right or taking care of himself or herself. Okay? But again, if you're married... Good luck. It's not smooth and easy. It's a lot of stress and anxiety. The probably the worst you have in your life. And people are on their best behavior. If they, if each party knows that the other one could leave like that, you're going to make more of an effort. You're going to for like typically a guy should be the leader in the relationship. He's going to plan dates. He's going to do things to court her because that's what they want. And again, guys, this is for you guys that want to do relationships. This isn't a relationship channel, but I will add in some advice I've learned over the years to help you guys that do relationships, you know, to help you out. If you're courting her and doing all that, that's going to keep her want, feeling wanted and, and all that. And by doing so, she's going to take care of herself if she knows in a heartbeat you can leave. That's key. Okay. If a woman thinks she has you, 
believe me, she's not going to try as hard. She's not going to try as hard with you. She's not going to take care of herself as much. But if she sees you as a prize and knows that and she wants to keep you around and knows that you can leave at any time just like that, believe me, she's going to be on her best behavior. She's going to take care of herself physically at the gym, eating well, dressing well, dressing sexy, certainly sleeping with you, all that. You're better off. That's a reason why not being married and not living together. Number five. Marriage makes you fall into a rut. Now, this won't happen immediately and may not happen in every marriage, but studies have shown that in a comfortable marriage, people become complacent. What I tell you guys about, hey, we got the rings on their fingers, guy doesn't have to take her out anymore, it's just Netflix and takeout on the weekend until she says something, and she's like, hey, I don't have to go to the gym anymore and look hot because I got this guy, and well, he's not taking me out anymore. See? And then there's other shit. She says, they gain weight, they stop dressing up for their spouses, and the spark goes away. In a relationship, that spark might last longer. You look forward to seeing the other person each Friday night, or look forward to text messages every day. That's not a rut if you aren't falling into the same old schedule with your significant other. Right. If you guys are seeing each other once a week, because I tell you guys, say, do it once a week, that's it. She's excited to see you. She's enthusiastic, you know, and again, she, back of her mind, if... She's thinking, if I only see this guy once a week, maybe the other days he's going out with somebody else. If you're not exclusive, women are competitive. She's going to be on her best behavior. Now, some women aren't going to like the fact that maybe you're seeing somebody else. Some may not go for that and just end it. But there are other ones that will, that, will, that will deal with it because they're probably dating other dudes too. Mark my words. But marriage does make you fall into a rut. If you're not married, again, you're on your best behavior and you're trying harder. Each party is. Number six, it doesn't make sense financially. When I separated from my ex-husband, I changed all the accounts into my name and split the debt from the marriage in half. I bought my own house and paid my own bills. It doesn't make sense financially to get married again. With marriage, you take on someone else's bills and debt. Even if your name isn't on that loan, you're still legally tied to the person whose name does appear on it. So marriage can make sense financially, let's just say if you both make the same amount of money and you're both on track, you split the bills and the costs and all that. That's all nice and fine and dandy so long as everything's cool. But if there's a divorce and let's just say the guy makes more money than her, like way more money than her, or let's just say he makes the money and she doesn't work, he's now on the hook for alimony. She's going to no doubt get the house and the kids and all that, you know, or if she makes more money, he or, and he's the, like Mr. Mom stays at home. He can get the thing. So it's just, they may, may work if things are cool and they're splitting the bills, but thing, you get a divorce, it ain't going to make sense financially. And yeah, you can take on the other person's debt and all those other things, depending on where you live and the situation. Not worth it. Uh, number seven. This is a good one. My friendship suffered while I was married. It wasn't like my husband forbade me from having friends or anything, but you hang out with couple friends and do things with them. Single friends don't want to be the third wheel, so they slowly drift out of married couples' lives. And when you start having kids, you find friends with kids. It's a cycle. My friendships I had before marriage certainly were not the same when I came out of it on, on my own. So yeah, I've, I've gone to so many parties that friends have had for their kids, barbecues and all that, and it was a good way to get together and see my friends. And the whole party, they had their married friends with kids, people that they met at the kids' preschool or whatever the hell it happened to be, and they're boring. They just stand around and watch the kids play. They're fucking boring. And I watch my friends, some of these guys I've known for a long time, and they have this look in their eyes like their soul has been taken away from them, okay? And we don't hang out as much because, like, their wives, these, these are certain friends I don't hang out with all the time, their wives want to hang out with other couple friends, you know, because they don't like the single guys, like we're going to rub off on them and give them an idea that, hey, maybe this isn't so crack, what's cracked up to be. This happens so much, and it's unfortunate, you know. But you guys, those of you guys who do marriage, you got to make time for your buddies. You know, the old thing about bros before hoes. Okay, if you're going to be married, have time to hang out with your buddies, even if they're single or not. Have a guy's night, okay? It's important. It's important that you do your thing with your buddies, and she does things with her friends, okay? Again, if you guys that are married, they're watching, because I know i got plenty of you that are married and are watching this. Number eight. I want to be independent. 
Not that I won't ever be in another relationship, but I think when you're married, you fall into the routine where you turn to your spouse for everything. Financially, emotionally, mentally, physically, they are your go-to person. That's not necessarily a bad thing, but I want some independence from another person. I don't want to rely on someone else for my happiness. I know guys have been married so long, they just can't do anything without consulting their spouse. And it isn't necessarily that they just, they, they've just been so conditioned to do that because they feel like they're in a partnership and whether it be to for anything i mean no joke they, they they always consult and it goes both ways it's very strange there's no sense of independence no independent thought i just can't imagine a life like that number nine here's an obvious one a lot of marriages end in divorce it's estimated that 60 percent of marriages of second marriages end in divorce i don't want to go through that all again so why put myself in that situation in the first place you can live with someone forever and have a long-term relationship without getting married. And should that end, it can end without getting divorced. Anybody who's been through divorce knows darn well that is a, a nightmare from hell. So why would you want to go through it again? And she says 60% of second marriages. Well, I know that's a statistic, at least right now, and it's been for just first-time marriages. I mean, it's crazy. Why would you get in a situation where the absolutely the odds are it's going to end badly? And cost you so much. It's it's crazy, but again, people make their decisions based on emotions, and then they use their 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 ration to back up that decision. It's crazy. Number ten. It takes a lot of time to make a marriage work. I'm sure you've heard that marriages are like jobs, and they take a lot of work. They certainly do. I have a full time job already, and I don't want to have time for another one. I also just don't have the energy to make my marriage work. I would rather spend my time furthering my career and spending time with my daughter. I don't want to have to feel guilty not putting effort into marriage. Okay. This is another thing. Like, you know, it sounds like she's on her purpose. Whatever. It sounds like her daughter's her purpose and her job's her purpose. Guys, when you find what your purpose is in life, okay, you'll become just, that's what you want to do. And you don't want to give up your purpose, whatever it happens to be, like whether you want you start a business because it's something you love and you want to dedicate your heart and soul to making that a success. You want that that becomes the number one thing in your life. And you want to de- have multiple purposes because it's really hard to focus on the one purpose. And also again, like you reach a point you just don't want to do that anymore in terms of like making somebody else your life. A lot of people watching this will sound that's incredibly selfish and how can you think that way? But more and more people are realizing that. And again, it goes both ways. You know, I, this is, again, this article is written by a woman, but she's saying a lot of things that I wholeheartedly agree with. And I just have never really said in other videos. Uh, last one, number 11, because they skipped number three because I want to have an advertisement for number three to get your attention on this article. So it goes one, two, four, five, six, and goes to 11. Number 11, here's a really good one. I don't want stepkids. I did a video on Friday and Saturday about this guy who got married and he had his daughter and she was the, 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 the child from hell, teenager whose dad died five years earlier, and it was an absolute nightmare. She was destroying his property and just never ending problems with the neighbors and him and disrespect. And finally, one day he came home and she was destroying his car and that did it. And he told her to get the fuck out. And then he ended his marriage because of that stepdaughter. No one needs this bullshit. She says... The reality at my age is that when I have to marry someone who has been married before or at least has kids. This may be selfish, but I don't want to deal with stepkids and ex-wife and the baggage that goes along with all of that. I know that's asking a lot as I have a kid and an ex-husband that sometimes would need to deal with, deal with, but I'm just not interested in taking on someone else's life where it ended. Yeah, again, that story I did last week is an extreme case, but it goes to show you. But any of you guys have been married and divorced and you have kids and having to deal with the ex-wife and all that baggage it's a lot okay and again getting together with some of the kids for you guys have done that you know darn well that sometimes it can go well but other times it's a mess and it's just a big fucking headache so i advise you guys not to get involved with somebody like that but if you're gonna do it at the very least do it on a situation either a it's for hookups because a lot of single moms, they just want to have fun because they've been in a marriage for, for a while. They, they want, they're finally free and they just want to fuck. Point blank, that's what they want to do. They want to party for a while. And they find the next guy they marry and the cycle repeats itself. 
But if you guys are absolutely hell bent on relationships or even marriage, if you're going to do relationships with a single mom who has kids, you know, go into the situation with it with a. Uh, a very good finely tuned radar and look for the red flags. If that kid's going to be a giant pain in the ass, if it's going to make things very hard, if there's issues with the ex or the family, pay pay close attention to all that because that way then if you see any problems, you can bail before your heart gets involved because that's the last thing you need. Trust me. So, all right, guys, I thought that was a great article because it was written by a woman getting the female perspective and showing that it isn't just guys that are saying, hey, this doesn't work and it's not worth it. So, all right, guys, that's it for today. Be sure to comment down below. Let me know what you think about this and be sure to like the video, share it with your friends and subscribe and I'll catch you next time.